10.50, 10 minutes before the hour. In the Twin Cities on AM 950, that would be 10.50 AM. Michelle, you need to get up. You need to get up now. This is also religious radio that's not quite right and the personal wake-up service with Michelle. Hey, uh, I'm Doug Padgett, and around here we try to have a conversation about the important things that go on in life, everything. We call it religious radio that's not quite right. My view is that religion ought to be the big category, ought to include all of life and not be this little set-apart, separate topic that people talk about. And I was struck with this, and I got Ben Johnson staying in the studio here with me. I was struck by this uh, this uh, this week. I saw a movie called Ser- A Serious Man, hmm. the Coen Brothers movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So I had heard that they did a movie, and I heard that they did a movie that was based in Minnesota, but I didn't put it together that it was this movie. So I went to see this movie, and it's hmm. about um, a, a family, a Jewish family in 1967. So like my childhood, I was born in 66, but sort of the period. And, I mean, it's great. Great 1960s Minnesota thing. They go to the em- they go to Embers. I was going to say the Embers, which is what you'd yeah, say. Well, there they, was only one. Yeah. They go to the Embers. The Red Owl. The Red Owl. They we got- gave a Red Owl T-shirt away from our. Oh, electric. you did. Oh, we just yeah. give away. They have Red Owl T-shirts. Oh, I would love a Red Owl design. T-shirt. I mean that 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 Red Owl logo. Yeah. That was just. He was a little mean looking. I mean, I remember as a kid looking. being a little yeah, freaked yeah. out by that Red Owl. Went to the one over looking. in Golden Valley off of Highway 55. Kind of freaked you out a little. He had that little turned up hair and those and those those slitted eyes, and he was just a little. He looked like he pointy was, beak, man. Pointy yeah. beak. I mean, that red owl. You didn't mess with the oh, red owl. Uh, it's yeah. red, mean. Yeah. So anyway, I went to see this movie, and it's uh, it's. I, I liked it a lot. I got home and had to you know go on the internets to try to figure out what um, what was you know what other people were saying about this movie. And now I need to go see it again. Have you seen it yet? No, but we yeah, should go see fun. it together. We should uh, go I'd see like it. To. It's uh, it's it's worthwhile. Um, and I think seeing it twice, especially, I don't think it was good that I didn't know anything about yeah, the movie because as it's happening, I'm like, man, that looks like St. Louis Park. And I yeah. think it was Bloomington or St. Louis Park where they shot yeah, this St. and they Louis recreated Park. all this. Uh, yeah, it was really quite. Uh, it, w- it was it was really quite quite something. So anyway, it got me thinking about how how religion is integrated in that movie, and in in a way that's not overly positive because religion was like this struggling thing for this guy and faith and trying to put together his his life and the fable of his family and faith and all this stuff. And, but and, and I think that that's the way religion ought to be. But I don't think it should be uh, such an arduous arduous process. And I think it's be- I think it becomes more arduous the more we outsource our religion to other people, the more we give it away and say that somebody else is going to tell us how it's supposed to go. I think that's where it really uh where we we really end up in trouble on the whole thing. So so anyway, uh that got me thinking about the cripes segment for this uh for this week. I do a little segment here on the show that I call cripes. Come on and you got to be kidding me. These uh these sayings that I have and I find myself uh, babbling on about and so I try to bring them uh, I try to bring them here now. Now I, I really don't have a particularly good cripes. I was traveling some this week, and I spent a little time in in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it kind of mellows me out. I think when I'm in Santa Fe, and uh, you know, so I didn't really have a, a, a whole lot of them until uh, I started going through security to leave the airport in Santa Fe and come back through. And I'm standing there, you know, taking off my belt, taking off my shoes, and putting my shampoos into little clear Ziploc bags. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> really, yeah. is that what we worry about? And then these pilots overshoot the airport by 150 miles. And what we're worried about is if I have my shoes on. Oh, just drives me nuts. Uh, yeah. So so anyway, but I know. And, they and my were in friend, a heated debate, Doug. Come on. Who, who was? They oh, they, those debate. two guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what they need? They need a Grover uh, outside the window that, that says to them, you know, you got uh, 30 seconds left and you got to got to land the airplane. I do feel badly for those guys. And I actually put that into my come on segment. Um you know that uh, that 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 uh, that these guys are. You know they're done, right? Like like they're they're in they're in big trouble just because it's become such a big media dealio. And the way the media talks about, it, I think they got a little turned around. When a plane is traveling at what what does a plane fly at? Three hundred, four hundred miles an hour? Yeah, at least five, six. Yeah, yeah. So if you overshoot an airport by a hundred fifty miles and you're going four hundred miles an hour, yeah, that's like 15, not all that 10 long. Minutes. Yeah, ten fifteen minutes, right? But the way they talk about it, because they were out of communication for an hour and a half, that's when they were flying to Minneapolis, then overshot by ten. Now look, you shouldn't overshoot. You know, we expect a little more out of our pilots. We think they're going to land that thing right on the right spot all the time, and I, I get that. But it, anyway, it's probably it's, foggy. Yeah, these guys are in uh, these guys are in big big trouble. These 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 pilots. So so my, my my come on is actually a positive one for today. I'm dropping off the rental car in Detroit this week, and it's it's this is on Friday, and it's like it was in Detroit. It's like it was here on Friday. Windy, cold, raining, just ah, oh, just well, a today. damp, mm-hmm. miserable day. Right. So I pull up to the to the place, and uh, I you know I drive the car up, and I'm trying to stall as long as I can before I get out because I got to go to the rental bus. 
you know that whole that whole shooting match. So I'm I'm heading over I'm heading over there, and the, the the person came over to check me in, you know, and make sure everything was right with the rental car and give me the receipt and all this. And it's this young gal. She's I don't know, early twenties I'm guessing, but she's got a raincoat on and it pulled down over her head. She's got some gloves on it, and it's 39 degrees and windy and raining. And I said to this to this gal, hey, I'm I'm really sorry that you have to be out working in you know such miserable conditions, such wet, rainy, miserable conditions as this. And she looks at me. You know what she said? And see, these are the people that encourage me in life. These are the these are the good people. She said, "I just keep telling myself, this is a perfect day to be a duck. <laughs> what a perfect day for the ducks." Did she quack? No, <laughs> she just said, "I'm not a duck, but I bet the <laughs> ducks are loving it. It's a great day to be a duck." And I'm thinking, who has that kind of perky attitude? Look at this gal. I mean, talk about the dopamine level just flying in this gal. And she just had the greatest smile on her face. And uh, and I thought, come on. I mean, people like you, you're the ones that make things hard on the rest of us. So somehow I turned that into a into a come on. But it was a positive one. Like, come on, couldn't 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 we all have that sort of attitude? And so then you know what I did? I walked over to the uh, to the rental car, which was a rental car bus, which was 50 feet away or 100 feet away or something. And I'm pulling my bag, and I got a bag in my shoulder, and I just walked like it was the sunniest day in the waddled. world. Waddled. Yeah, I just waddled over and thought, you know what? It's a great day to be a duck. That's right. So I kind of thought, look at these people. Now, now those aren't the kind of folks that write nice songs, Ben. Right? You don't think? No, maybe they write, maybe they write pop songs. Maybe they write the funny songs. Funny songs. I, I have a hard time with that uh, writing funny songs. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Like your songs. Maybe it's like the Bare Naked Ladies. Those guys. Yeah, Do they yeah. Write songs like that. Yeah, stuff like that. I, I, I don't. Know. Never really tried. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's just she, she's just a maybe happy, the duck thing is a just a happy, a happy, pleasant person. What a great day it is to be a duck. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I, maybe that should become like a uh, like a, a goal for some of us. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that we look at whatever sort of situation we're in? That's that's you know, I mean, is is reasonable, and yeah. you know, doesn't have to be a living creature. I mean, it's a good day to be a chair. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day to be a, a lizard you know, when, when it's you felt too hot sat and upon. Sunny. Yeah, yeah. You know, good good day to be carpet. <laughs> People walking all over me all the time. So the next time you're feeling one of those rainy days and you're saying to yourself, "Come on, just know that there's somebody out there." Says it's a great time to be a duck. That's fantastic. I mean, that's the kind of that's the kind of positivism that you need to have every once in a while in life. You need someone to sing you a good lament. You need someone to sing you a good song that pushes you through. And you need to run into the person that has to stand out in the rain and says, you know, it might be hard for me, but I'm not the only one in the story. I'm not the only one, you know, that's sort of sort of uh, important around here. I'm not the only one who's got something going on. Those ducks, they're loving days like today. I mean, this is this is right up there, Al. Hey, this is Doug Padgett. This is Religious Radio that's not quite right on AM 950. We're going to be back in the second hour, and we're going to be joined by Abby Andresco. We're going to be joined by Shelley Padgett. We're going to talk about science and religion. We're going to talk about um, companies that have good behavior and how we should be like those folks. So what we try to do around here is combine all the conversations together in your Sunday morning indulgence. Sunday mornings are not just for Bloody Marys anymore. Like Badger Radio, your Sunday morning companion, AM 950, the voice of Minnesota, and on the internet at DougPadgerRadio.com, around the world, and maybe even on the space station. 